In this lesson, we will begin our discussion of arthrology. Arthrology is the study of joints. What I'd like to do first is take a look at the anatomy of different types of joints. There's fibrous joints, there are cartilaginous joints, and we're going to see in another lesson synovial joints. In this lesson, I want to focus on fibrous joints as well as cartilaginous joints. So let's take a look at fibrous joints first. We're going to see that these joints, the bones are very close together and we have very little movement or even no movement. The reason for that is the joints are connected by collagen fibers. Right? So there's no joint cavity, there's space, there's no fluid in there, and as I said, there's little or no movement between the bones. Now, we have four different types of fibrous joints, or subtypes. The first one we actually know a little bit about when we studied osteology, which was bones. The sutures are the first type of fibrous joint. We saw them between the skull bones. In adults, the fibrous tissue will eventually fuse and become calcified. So let's take a look real quick. So just to go back to some of the pictures we had seen in osteology, um, frontal bone over here, parietal bone and then right here is the coronal suture. So if we did take these bones apart inside there, there would be fibrous tissue, collagen fibers. And we also had looked at the squamous suture over here. From posterior view we had taken a look at the lamboid suture and then we could see the sagittal suture here. All of those sutures would have collagen fibers in between the bones. The second type of fibrous joint we also know, these are the, this is what we defined in osteology as the soft spot. We find this in the fetus and the, now the fontanelles um, have a little bit more space between the bones. There's more connective tissue there that, that is fibrous tissue, but there's more space. There's some movement uh, between the bones to allow for growth and you know, the head to expand. Let's take a look. So again, this is a picture that we know from osteology. This is a, a bird's eye view down on the fetal skull. We could see here, this was where the coronal suture will form. This is the frontal suture, only in an infant, sagittal suture, and then we could see the lamboid suture. Now this intersection here between the coronal suture, the frontal suture, and the sagittal suture, this is the bigger anterior fontanelle, and then between the sagittal suture here that's going to form and the lamboid the smaller posterior fontanelle and then from a side view we can see here the sphenoidal fontanelle this is formed by the union of where the squamous suture is going to be right there and the coronal suture right there right? and that's going to be our sphenoidal and then posteriorly in the on the side view where the squamous suture is going to be meets the lamboid right there this is the mastoid fontanelle right there. Okay, so just going back, these are fibrous joints. There's four types. Sutures is the first one. Fontanelles is the second. And again, those we have some knowledge of from previous lessons. Here's a new one. So the third type of fibrous joint is known as a syndesmosis. This actually contains more fibrous tissue than a suture. So as a result, we're going to have some movement there. Again, the sutures don't really move at all, but this is going to allow some movement. So here's some examples. There's a membrane. We call it the interosseous. Inter means between. Osseous means the bones. Uh, this is a membrane between the ulna and the radius in the forearm. There's also a ligament we're going to look at in another lesson called the coracoclavicular ligament. This ligament goes from the coracoid process of the scapula to the clavicle. These are examples of syndesmosis. So here's a picture of the um, radius right here, the ulna, and this membrane right there. This is the interosseous membrane. Now I didn't put it in the notes, but I did put a picture here between the tibia and the fibula is also an interosseous membrane. So there is going to be between the fib and the tib, and then again here between the ulna and the radius. And we know this when we do uh, what we call pronation and supination, right? Our radius actually rotates over the ulna. Okay, so that's the syndesmosis. Here's the coracoclavicular ligament. This is the coracoid process. 
uh, anterior structure kind of always reminds me of the bent finger the coracoid process and then above it here is the clavicle right over here this is heading over towards the sternum this is your a chromium process over here so this ligament right there these are the coracoclavicular they allow for the clavicle to move over the scapula okay the fourth type of fibrous joint is known as a gomphosis so this consists of a peg fitting into a socket perfect example are our teeth, whether it's the upper teeth going into the maxilla, the alveolar process of the maxilla, or the lower teeth going into the alveolar process of the mandible. These are considered gomphosis. Now, there are ligaments in there that hold the tooth in the socket, right? If you try to move your tooth, these are known as the periodontal ligaments. We'll study these again in anatomy and physiology too, when we study the anatomy of the teeth. So these are the ligaments that hold the teeth in the socket. So we can see up here, this is the alveolar process of the maxilla. I remember that from when we did bones. And then down here, this is the alveolar process of the mandible. And here we have the sockets for the teeth. So those are the fibrous joints. Again, the four types of fibrous joints. I'd like to finish this lesson by taking a look at cartilaginous joints. So unlike a fibrous joint, these joints are made up of cartilage. There are two types of cartilage. There are hyaline cartilage and there is also fibrocartilage. So let's take a look at the cartilaginous joints. The first one is known as a symphysis. So there's only two types, not four this time. There's going to be two types. Uh, the first one is known as a symphysis. This is a fibrocartilage disc. So these are the discs in our body. For example, the intervertebral disc. That's the disc between the body of the vertebrae. The symphysis pubis is a disc. Uh, that's between the two pubic bones. So any fibrocartilage disc in the body is ca as categorized as a symphysis. So here's a, a, a lateral view of the vertebral column we could see here. This is now cut, we're looking into it, but here's a vertebrae. Right? Here's a vertebrae below. They cut into the top part here, here it's intact. Right, so here we have a body of the vertebrae right there. And then look right here, this is the intervertebral disc. Right? And we also know from previous lessons that the intervertebral disc has two components. The outer cartilage is the annulus fibrosis, so that's the fibrocartilage. And then there's like a ball, a jelly. We call that the nucleus pulposus. Okay, so this would be classified again as a symphysis. Symphysis. A lot of these words sound the same, so it is a little bit difficult. Here's another example of a symphysis. This is actually has the name symphysis pubis, or we sometimes say pubic symphysis. So the name symphysis is actually in the classification. This right here is a disc. Right? This is a fibrocartilage disc. The second and last type of cartilaginous joint is known as the synchondrosis. So this time the cartilage in the joint is hyaline cartilage. Again, in the first type, it was fibrocartilage. This time it is hyaline cartilage. I have two good examples for you. One is the growth plate. That's also known as the epiphyseal plate. When we're growing, let's say here's the humerus. We have a growth plate. Let's say here, this is the head of the humerus. This is the beginning of the shaft of the humerus, what we call the shaft, the diaphysis, and the head up over here would be the epiphyses. This growth plate right here is between bones, right? Here's the bone of the epiphyses. Here's the bone of the diaphysis. So even though it's all within one bone, the, the, ac the actual definition, it's a piece of hyaline cartilage between two bones but these two bones are part of the humerus. So this growth plate right here is gonna be cartilage during our formative years. Now, eventually when we stop growing, you know, late teens, early 20s, everybody's a little bit different. The growth plate disappears and then this will form bone over here. So this is where our growth plate was at one point here. And on this bone right up over here, this was the growth plate. So these eventually do uh, calcify. 
Okay, so that's the epiphyseal plate. If you want to just jot down in your notes, this is also known as the growth plate. The second example of a synchondrosis is the sternocostal rib. Watch this. So this is our last slide. Here's a view of our ribs. Now remember, the ribs come from the thoracic vertebrae. They extend forward. Here's the end of the rib right here where it changes direction. And then the rib comes towards the sternum. But notice the rib does not make direct contact with the sternum. There is hyaline cartilage connecting the rib to the sternum right here. This is the, um, the sternal angle right there between the manubrium and the body. So it, this, this rib happens to come in right over here. This is the second rib. Here's the first rib over here, right? So this right here is hyaline cartilage. And again, these are both examples of synchondrosis. So that, that ends this lesson again on fibrous joints and cartilaginous joints. In subsequent lessons, we'll take a look at what range of motion is, and then we'll take a look at synovial joints.